All right, that was beautiful. It's just been wonderful. So inspirational and moving. Everybody speaking has been great. All right, so this is going to be our final speaker for the night. And then we're going to have a little section at the end for a couple of you to put in your final points because it's just been a time thing. So next up is Max Egan from the Grow House. He is great up Try it. Can I see the next slide? Hi, folks. How are you going? Right. Nice to be here. Thank you for putting this on. Thank you for putting this on. So, you know who I am. There's no need for introductions. So, yeah, reality check. It's been really good hearing what everyone said today. There's been some really, really good speakers. I'm really impressed with what uh, you've had to say. Raphael, Raphael, I'd like to have you on the show to talk about that. And same with Jack, I want to have you on to talk about what you said. But you know, we've got to really look at what we're facing here, folks. So I always like to include this slide, reality check, because what we're dealing with is a group of career criminals. They're pedophiles. Whoops. A group of pedophiles is running the world who all work together, all these governments all work together to manufacture wars and brainwash our children and spray our skies with poisons and flitter it out of water and dumb us down and feed people rubbish. That's really what's going on. And the police, well, they kind of work for the system and not for us. And they're rolling all this stuff out to enslave us into their smart prison, which is really not going to be good for us at all. And we, this is the people who are doing it. This is their main goal, is depopulation. You know, so with everything we're doing, we've got to take all this into account. You know, we're being slowly exterminated by these people. It's been an ongoing process. It hasn't really been going on as long as what people think. You know, people think this system's been in place for thousands of years, but I really don't think it has. I think it's been in place for a few hundred years at most. Some of the research that I've been doing lately has indicated that this is actually quite a new system that's been introduced. One of the things that does have changed our history. Anyone who's been listening to the show recently, I've been focusing on history a lot, because by removing our history, they remove our identity from us, and they create a sense of hopelessness in people, whereby we think it's always been this way. But it hasn't, it hasn't always been this way at all. But so this is what's rolling out, folks, 5G, and it's really important. And this is unfortunately the situation that we're facing with most of the population that we're dealing with, and um, this is just all coming online. And this again is what we're dealing with as well. This is how most people are trained to think. And this is what most family situations are like these days. People don't really seem to talk to each other anymore. It's very different. I only put this slideshow together this morning. I can't see what's coming up next. So I'm trying to remember what I wanted to say. But yeah, this is, uh, this is the state of our society, folks. These are the people that we're dealing with and all the stuff that we're, we're doing. So as much as we're being sort of kind to these people and trying to sort of politely wake them up, we've got to realise we're dealing with people who are heavily programmed and that's just the way it is. This is what most people's lives are all about. Of course, you can ask your children what's going on. They'll tell you because the education department tells them what's going on. That's why all the fences are there. The kids really know these days. And of course, if you really don't like the system, you can always play a game. And if you really don't like that, you can go to my magazine to make yourself feel better about yourself. <laughs> I really like to cater for the women in that department just to make you all feel great. So this is all we're dealing with, folks. And when we try to deal with it, this is usually our approach. You know, we just petition these people and ask them if they would please be nice to slave traders and slave masters to us and give us nicer shackles, please. And this is our approach. It's all working, folks, because... And, and even when people do wake up, they get into the conspiratorial culture, Okay, they get into all this stuff, they start looking at all this stuff on YouTube, and they forget this. You know, they, they find some hero on YouTube so that's going to save them. You know, some, some great truth guru who's going to come along with the master plan, and they forget this one small detail. That's all it takes to be a slave, is to wait for someone else to come free you, and to believe that you are a slave. 
to believe that anyone has authority over you to begin with, because we just made this whole thing up. And if you really want to think about it, the whole legal system, you know, we constructed a legal system to prevent the causation of harm and to provide remedy when that harm is caused. And all the legal system does is cause harm. All government does is cause harm. Government is terrorism by default. You know, terrorism is defined by the English dictionary as violence or the threat of violence carried against civilians as a means of coercion, often for political reasons. And that's everything the government does. That's what the education system is, that's what everything is. Everything that the, anything that, that forces you to do something under threat of punishment is terrorism. This isn't any way to learn. This isn't any way to teach our children how to learn things. You must do this or get threatened to get the cane or get detention or whatever. And with what they're doing with the smart grid, they're taking it to the next level because everybody's getting really addicted to the internet these days. And um, all they've got to do is threaten to lock you out of the system. And that's all the threat they need to keep people into compliance and to coerce them into compliance. And this is psychological terrorism, even by getting people enslaved to this smart grid. This is a picture by a friend of mine called Adam Scott Knight, and it's called Wisdom's Dare. Because that's what I think life is. Life is wisdom's dare, and it's dare is to be wise. And in every crisis that we face, there is huge opportunity. The Chinese word for crisis and opportunity are interchangeable. So we should, we should look at that. There's a huge opportunity in all this. The, the system has been laid really, really bare now. And if, we, if we're correct about it, we get all these people that are going down these rabbit holes and give them a little bit of focus on this 5G, we might even wake them up to the chemtrails. What's going on with that? Because it's all interrelated. You know, the chemtrails are, are positively charging the air. And I think they're going to be used to carry the 5G signal everywhere. And the 5G system is a prison system. It's not a communication system. It's a prison system. You know, it's going to do so much damage to us. The, uh, the, the radio waves, the frequencies it's going to put out. It's going to be like we're all living permanently inside an airport scanner when 5G comes online. Not to mention the active denial capabilities of it. You can actually target individuals with 5G. You can target certain individuals for active denial, like that picture I had up before of the girl crouching over. The nanotech that's in people now from the chemtrails, because this is a multi-platform delivery system, they're doing so many things with it. You know, delivering heavy metals into the air, delivering heavy metals into us, into the soil, barrier so they can uh, track everybody. You know that old film Running Man with, with an Arnold Schwarzenegger, I think, the governor Schwarzenegger, yeah. And they uh, injected him in barium before he went off running so they could track him on the radar. Remember all that? That's what the barium is for, so they can track everyone. So they can track everyone with the x radar. Everyone's got an electromagnetic signature now so they can find everybody. There's nowhere to hide. And they're doing it everywhere. And all the governments work together, folks. The internet of things is coming on everywhere, and that's what it's all about. It's a prison system. Lock humanity into this, this little cage where they can keep us exactly where they want them. And it's everywhere. They want to keep humanity in a place, and that's where they do keep us, in this place where we're always just struggling, trying to find a way out, and even trying to find our way out through legal means. And all the legal stuff that you're talking about, that Jack was talking about, and all the other legal methods that, that you're talking about as well, this is great stuff, we need to do it, but we're not really going to get a remedy from it because everybody's compromised. If they weren't compromised, they wouldn't have that position. You know, the world's run by pedophiles. They run all these wars mainly to harvest organs, is what they do with most of the wars. And it's all contrived, and all the governments work together. They all work together. And that's the problem with government. That's why we don't need them. And like I said earlier, I don't think we had these people along, uh, for very, around for very long at all. I really don't. Um, I think there was an event that happened maybe four or five hundred years ago Something that I've found in my travels in the last year that's really caused me to question history. And I spent most of my life looking at history. That's what got me on this path, was, was wondering how we got here, wondering how they built the pyramids and all this stuff. How it was all done? Why there's these monuments lying everywhere around the earth? And what I've found recently is, is the remnants of a, a mud flood that's gone across Europe within the last 500 years. And it appears that this has wiped out a whole layer of Europe, at least 12 feet in some countries. Um, sometimes one or two stories of buildings, entire stories, entire floors, and it's not in any history books. And it's about the time they changed the calendar. And really when you look at all the remnants of all the artifacts and all the remains of all the ancient civilizations all around the world, they've all got a common fingerprint. And it would appear that there was one culture that existed on this earth not too long ago. You know, a lot of the stuff that they're telling us happened thousands of years ago probably didn't. It probably happened hundreds of years ago. 
and they changed history when they changed the calendar to give us this sense of despair and to create the need for government. Now, if you look at things like the Vedas, the Vedic culture, that society appears to have existed all over the earth. We didn't have governments. We all looked after each other. We did things right. You know, we're very, very different to what we think we are. We really are. And, you know, some of the stuff that I've learned in the last year, and this as well, you know, does anyone think that, that the government is going to save us? All this sort of stuff. Does anyone think this guy is really going to save us? He's following the same agenda. All these people work together for us. Like I said, it's all the same agenda. But they've created this false history and created this whole narrative to create this threat which isn't real. You know, all these wars are contrived. There's no reason for anyone to be killing anybody. There's no reason for any country to be going to war with any other country. It's all governments facing off against each other and creating these threats and selling it to the people and then just depopulating the planet. That's what they're doing. It's depopulation. You know, that, that whole concept of 500 million, they want to lead the world into where there's only a population of 500 million. That's what they're doing with this whole smart system and that's how they'll do it. And then they'll dumb everybody down and remove everybody of their health and get these little drones, 500 million drones just working for and running their system. And this is what's going to be running it all, the whole 5G grid. And like I said, it's coming out everywhere. If you think that America and, and Russia are really enemies, you go to Russia, what do you see? 5G. Everywhere. Go to uh, North Korea. What's happening in North Korea? 5G. Smart grid. What's happening in Iran? 5G. Smart grid. What's happening in all of the Middle East? 5G and the smart grid. What's happening all across Europe? 5G and the smart grid. Australia are leading the way. Peru, I can't even come and live in the jungle. 5G and the smart grid. It's coming online everywhere. Folks, Cuba. Big America, big America's big enemy, traditional enemy, 5G and the smart grid, coming in Cambodia, coming on in Africa, coming on everywhere, Lebanon. Look at this, and Israel, this is who invented it, of course, the 5G technology. So it's coming in everywhere, folks, and it's been presented as something wonderful, but really it's just this prison system. Now what they're doing with 5G is, is this, like I said, active denial. They can target people and they can limit people's movement. And with the chemtrails, everything's positively charged. They can pinpoint anybody anywhere. So there's not going to be any escape from the system, no matter where you are in the country. And you think about it, they're saying that they've got to put these posts every 400 metres to carry the, the millimetre wave because it's a really short wave. But yet they're saying the country regions are going to have a 5G signal as well. So how's that going to happen? It's the chemtrails. That's what's being used as the carrier wave. Not to mention the fact that blocking out the sun and all the other things they're doing with it, it's also providing a carrier way for this whole electromagnetic system that they're rolling out. It's also scaring off all the insects, all the bees, all the birds. Something I've had great success with uh, waking up people in England and people in the UK have been talking to beekeepers and horticulturists, people who run plant nurseries. This is a really good uh, input that you can go to. It's a great um, way to get into people that wouldn't have a normally a conspiratorial mindset, people who are beekeepers talk to them about 5G, how it's going to disrupt the bees because they want to keep their, their flowers, they want to keep their honey. The little lady down the road likes growing her roses and they're not going to work properly in the 5G system. So they're getting concerned. And they'll go out to the local bridge tribe and they'll talk to people who don't have a conspiratorial mindset. There's a big movement happening in country regions, farmers, beekeepers, horticulturists. So that's a really good uh, group of people to talk to. If they're not aware of this 5G uh, information, they're not aware of the chemtrails, it's a good uh, spot to start. Because that way you can approach these people and they will listen to this information and then they get a little bit down the rabbit hole and it starts opening up to other things. So it's a great, great starting point to go to. Because it's coming out everywhere, folks. And have you seen what's going on in China with social crediting? I mean, I've been screaming out about this for months now, social crediting. People are just starting to pick up on it now. When I, when I did a talk on this in Mexico in February, there were, um, was it 7.9 million people on China's credit blacklist. About a month ago, there were 11 million people on it, and uh, about two weeks ago, I had another report that's 13 million people now on China's credit blacklist. So that's grown from 7.9 to 13 million people since February. And on the credit blacklist, if you're caught doing something they don't like, you just get blacklisted and suddenly you can't have access to certain services. I've got a little video here, I don't think we need audio for it. So uh, this guy um, got blacklisted. He was a journalist who wrote an article about the government. 
And then he went to buy an airline ticket a couple of weeks later and got told he wasn't qualified for the airline ticket. There's no appeal process. There's no one he can call, there's no one he can email, there's nothing he can do. He just can't buy an airline ticket. And he can't buy a ticket on a high tier train. You can only buy local trains. So effectively, he can't leave the country. Can't buy a train ticket, can't buy an airline ticket, how do you get out of the country? This video, if I can get it to play, maybe it won't play on this. But this video shows, this is an intersection, and it shows that they're actually photographing people walking across the intersection. And if you jaywalk, they will grab your face off the, off the image and they'll put it on the, on the video display that they've got on a local bus shop to shame you to the rest of the population that you're an untrustworthy person. Because that's what they're basing it on, your trustworthiness. And once you're deemed untrustworthy, you're always untrustworthy. And it goes through the video to show you that untrustworthy people are people who are caught smoking in a non-smoking zone, people who are caught jaywalking, people who are caught doing the most ridiculous of little things, suddenly they find that they're blacklisted and they can't buy certain things, they can't have access to certain services. Certain services such as buying plane tickets, buying rail tickets or renting a house. Think about that one. You know, so if you say something the government doesn't like, suddenly your social credit points get limited and you are denied access to certain services. Once it all goes smart, then you'll have your clock radio listening to you, you'll have Alexa listening to you, and if you say something that the algorithm doesn't like, it'll just put a black mark against your name and you'll get blacklisted by your file, you won't even know it's happening until you go to buy something and you find you're not qualified for that service. And then if you get too far outside the system, in China they've got these new facial recognition glasses. They picked someone out of a crowd a couple of weeks ago, 60,000 people at a rock concert, all looking at the stage, and they've got this one guy out of the crowd, let him out with this facial recognition system they've got in China. These glasses, so the algorithm can simply say, well, Angel has just said something we don't like in, in her bedroom while she was talking to her husband and she said something else again, her toaster heard her saying it in, at breakfast time. So now we've put three black marks against her and she's now below the social credit point where now we, we deem her to be a danger to society. So when she goes out shopping, there's a police officer out there who's been alerted that this person is out and about to put his glasses on, there she is. And the algorithm has already determined what the punishment is according to what her social status is so she goes into the smart prison. And that's how you deal with dissenters. They just disappear. Simple. Because they're untrustworthy. And everyone wants them to disappear because they're untrustworthy. The Chinese actually like this. They think it's great. They think it's going to make a more trustworthy society. So that's where we're going, folks. That's the whole thing. That's where they're taking it. The whole internet is all in you know, a wolf in sheep's clothing. That's what it's been about. Has anyone here a show that I did about a year ago called Giving Life to Lucifer? Anyone listen to that show? That show kind of explained what we've done with the internet, how we've, we've given it all our power, and how it's now becoming a life force of its own. We're handing full autonomy over to it, and it's going to be making the decisions that control our lives, all based on algorithms, which are all based on a, an economic perspective of everybody. It sees everybody as an economic node, and it judges you according to your political correctness and your government approval rating. That's where it's going, folks. Right? That's what it's always been. And it's leading into this, this new trade system that nobody's talking about either. One belt, one road, the new Chinese trade system. This is why Trump's doing all this posturing and all this stuff in North Korea and all this stuff that's going on in China. He's pointing the United States away from the rest of the world. Make America great again. Bring all the industry here, get all these things happening here, which is good the way it should be in a normal country if we're going to have these sorts of countries, which we really don't need anyway. But anyway, if we're going to have it, sure, you need the industry here. But the way he's doing it is to pull America away from Europe to create the excuse for the Europeans to adopt this new Chinese system, which is rolling out, which will isolate the United States more. And then when that happens, the United States will lose its uh, position as a global reserve currency. That's what will happen. And it's all going to go to crypto with this whole new one belt, one road system. I even told you about it. Remember this? The Economist magazine. Was this like 1986? 1988, 1986, and they tell you right there, 2018, get ready for a world currency. What year is it? 2018, it's all gone crypto, it looks like Bitcoin, you know. And Chinese, China has adopted a new cryptocurrency, it's going to be launching with its new trade system, so 
This is the way it's going to go. It'll be a gradual thing. There's going to be this big crash, and the United States will probably go last. It will maintain as the big, strong United States dollar with global reserve currency, and everything will fall down around it, and it'll look like it's all good. But then everyone will realise the ship's sinking, and they've got to change over to this system. And then America's going to have to tighten its belt and bring everything back online and I'll slowly introduce the Chinese work ethic, more regimented, more regimented, more surveillance, more cameras, more protection against terrorism. It's a joke. And this is what we're dealing with, folks, trying to deal with this for people. So that's the bad news, anyway. People are sitting there thinking the world's all great and all this shit's going on behind them. And they're just not looking at it, unfortunately. So that's what we're dealing with and that's, that's what they're doing. They're, they're looking for help from the government all the time to fix these problems. You know, even when we, we, we deal with the chemtrail issues, we, we're, we're getting all this stuff and we're taking it to government and saying, look, look, see? Well, most of them probably know, and if they don't know, then they're compromised anyway, otherwise they wouldn't be in a position or authority enough for you to be taking some papers to them. They've been caught out, they've been brownstone, they've been caught with a 14-year-old prostitute or a little boy or a little girl or something. That's why they're there in that office. And if we don't take that into account with what we're dealing with, then we're screwed to begin with. You know, we've got to realise that what government is, is a fiction. It's a multi-generational, multi